Okay, so what we're going to do today is talk about river systems uh, and how things work in a river. Now, um, in this particular section, what we're going to do is we're going to describe the way in which a river develops. Okay, that's your first objective. Just a second here while it boots up. Then you're going to explain how a stream can cause erosion. And then we're going to describe uh, the stages of a river, old, mature, and young. Should be pretty easy, pretty easy to do. Um, and so we'll just move forward from here. So first of all, if we look at the Vermilion River, which is our local river, um, our river is fed by tributaries. Uh, anybody here live in, say, Sonoman area? Okay, good. So over in Sonoman, we've got Five Mile Creek. Five Mile Creek eventually uh, uh, makes its way over to Sonoman, uh, from Sonoman to the Vermilion River. We've got over in uh, Fairbury, we've got the South Fork of the Vermilion River. Uh, over by the golf course, we've got little creeks over there. We've got uh, uh, different tributaries. In other words, they're contributing to the river. And so our river, the Vermilion River, is a tributary of the uh, 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 Illinois River. And the Illinois River is a tributary of the Mississippi River. And so um, all of those together lead into the bigger system. So these are tributaries. And basically all it is is that they're contributing or uh, leading into um, another area. Now, anywhere we get rain in our area or anywhere where water runs off into the system or the tributaries is called a watershed. So uh, when we discuss our watershed, it's the Vermilion River watershed. That encompasses uh, all the way from Paxton, Illinois, all the way up to uh, the, uh, the Illinois River, which is up by Ottawa, right? And so it, it, it basically covers that entire area. It's where our water runs into the river. Okay, so here's the question. What do you think of when you think of a divide? I think of a barrier, a slice, a whatever that's causing something to be split. Well, when we talk about divides, we're talking about a piece of elevated ground that causes an area to be cut off from another area. And so um, when we refer to the Continental Divide, we're referring to somewhere in the Rocky Mountains, which i um, been there a couple of times. You get up to about 16 or 14,000 uh, feet elevation, and basically it cuts the country in half. I mean, everything on the west side of, of, the, of the Rocky Mountains drains towards California, and everything on the east side uh, of the Rocky Mountains drains towards the east coast. And so when we talk about uh, a divide, we can have smaller divides. Divides don't have to be continental divides, but that's what we were referring to right there. A gully. From our last section, we discussed what gullies are. Basically, it's a ditch that's been eroded away. And so it's been cut out, removed material, and uh, water has caused it to do... When I was a kid, we used to refer to big rainstorms as gully washers. Why? Because we had a lot of water cleaning out the gully, and it was washing it basically downstream. And so essentially uh, uh, a lot of material that we have moves downstream, and it does that. So here is a picture of uh, our river system from outer space. Now, what's interesting is um, all these little uh, blue marks that you see up in the upper left-hand corner, uh, these little lines, those lines are tributaries feeding into the river, and it's flowing into uh, a larger, larger tributary, which uh, happens to be over on the right-hand side of this image. Now, here's a question. How do we know that this is not the Vermilion River? Anybody have a clue? Well, no, it, this is, uh, I mean, this depends on, depending on the scale, of course, the, the Vermilion River um, uh, is about 75 miles. So, you know, you don't know what scale is on this picture, but you know what, what really is the big, the big idea here 
is that if this is truly a, an image that was taken and it north is at the top and south is at the bottom, it could not be the Vermilion River because the Vermilion River flows what direction? It flows north. It actually flows north from south to north. Um, and so this river particular here is going uh, uh, in a southward direction. Uh, the little fingers feed into the bigger fingers, which feed into the larger areas. Uh, and so that is a, the, those are all little tributaries of this particular river, which I don't know what this river is. So, but here is our, uh, here's our rivers uh, in the Illinois River. And you can see up in the right-hand corner up here by uh, I-55, um, they have a, a image of the Vermilion River, and it just stops there. It doesn't actually stop there. It actually goes over to Paxton, Illinois. But it shows up by uh, Oglesby in Ottawa, um, the Vermilion River uh, 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 going into the Illinois River. Um, the thing I really like about this is it does give you a good, uh, a good uh, image of all of the tributaries of the Illinois River. You've got the Mackinac, and you've got the Spoon, and you've got uh, the Lemoyne. Uh, you've got the Sangamon. Uh, Salt Creek, uh, McCoupin, and at different points they're flowing in. And so uh, I think it's a really good diagram to show you all of the tributaries that flow into the Vermilion River. Now, that being said, we're talking about the entire state of Illinois right here. I mean, with the exception of Chicago, which if you look, if you go further north on the Illinois River, uh, obviously you're going to start to encompass those counties as well. But we've got a diagram that shows... For essentially all of the tributaries of the Illinois River, which I think is cool. Um, here's an image right here over on, on the right uh, is a, a topographical, not topographical, but a, uh, a more of a landform geographical uh, feature. Uh, and then over on the left here uh, is the actual Continental Divide. Continental Divide, again, on the left side, all the water drains west on the right side all the water drains east why because you got a big freaking mountain there and so you know it's kind of like you're not going to have water go through the rock in this case because it's such a large uh landform uh and so as a result of it if it rains it's going that to the right or the left so uh continental divide pretty cool thing uh basically it's not really in the middle, though, and people people always think that they go, oh, the continental divide is right in the middle of the, uh, uh, of the United States. If that's the case, then it would be the line going straight from uh, on the west side of Minnesota all the way down to Texas. And I don't think that's going to happen. That's not not exactly what it is. All right. So what's a channel? What's a channel? Well, a channel uh, in welding would be an uh, an area that something goes through a channel in uh, um, like any other application something is is put into a groove if you will a channel in your door a channel in uh, a window uh, you know I, I could go on and on and and so in this case in stream erosion a channel is the path at which it flows right so uh, water will flow in the channel. The channel of the Vermilion River right now is quite, quite high. Uh, it's quite high. And the reason being for that is because our ice and, and whatnot is melting. And so as it does, it's flowing down the channel of the Illinois River, or the Vermilion River, right? I can't imagine how high the, uh, the Illinois River is because all of the tributaries that flow into the Illinois are now uh, at greater uh, flood stage as well headward erosion headward erosion basically is moving forward uh, with sediment um, and I've got a video that I think will will show this a little bit better uh, and I think it'll be easier to see but headward erosion is is as there's erosion taking place it appears that the stream is moving forward uh, uh, towards the head of the river or the beginning of the river. And so basically um, it's, it's eroding the material that's at the base of the river and moving backward. So let me see if I can show you here real quick. Um, and there's no real sound uh, with this so it should uh, other than gurgling which is not very 
exciting. Let me make it bigger here. So this area right here that looks like it's just chewing away, this here is called headward erosion. And it's basically moving towards moving towards the top of the stream. And so you can see it kind of backing up this way. Um, this is called headward erosion. And it happens in a river. It happens uh, in creeks and streams. And basically what's happening is, is the water is coming down here. It's chewing away. And then that material goes downstream. Well, as it goes downstream, it's now gone. There was a giant chunk right there. And it's just moving this way. And you can see it, um, see it just kind of back up towards wherever the water is being released from. Uh, so that's, that's headward erosion. Um, the next one is kind of interesting. It's called stream piracy. And, and uh, arr, you know, just kind of like a pirate. But um, basically it's the capturing of one watershed uh, or one stream by another. And where we see this is basically when uh, a stream or an area is either uplifted or something has fallen in the way of the, of the path of the stream, uh, like a major water slide, a uh, 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 landslide, and it goes into a totally different area. And so um, basically what happens is... Uh, a, a, a material goes into a, a, a river goes into another river or a stream goes into another stream and then abandons where it was going and so um when i when i think of this i think of this song by uh john denver almost heaven west virginia blue ridge mountain shenandoah river shenandoah river was a a, a river system that uh um has the Blue Ridge Mountains uh, that bisect it. And what happened was, as the Blue Ridge Mountains were uh, going and building and building up, you've got, you've got Gap Run Creek here, you've got Beaver Dam Creek and Goose Creek, and then you've got the Shenandoah, which all feeds into the Potomac. Now, what ends up happening is, you'll see here, um, there's an elevation change that takes place that cuts off uh, Beaver Dam Creek. And so Beaver Dam Creek then is bisected, and now it flows into the Shenandoah River. Same thing happens with Gap Run. And Gap Run uh, basically then diverts its stuff into the Shenandoah River. And what we've done is we've seen that the, the Shenandoah River just stole all of that water, stream piracy. And then at the end, we see Goose Creek uh, being cut off again uh, by the Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, and as it happened... Now we have the Shenandoah River, which uh, ended up flowing to the Potomac uh, uh, in a totally different way through stream piracy. Again, it stole the water. Shenandoah River. All right. Um, I want to show you a couple other real quick video clips. So this is how we can see how a river would meander and go back and forth and we'll talk about that again here um, but what I'm showing you is again that erosion coming off of a particular river or creek all right so the first thing I want to talk about now is what's called stream loads stream loads so a load is anything you carry right all right that makes sense something you carry a load <laughs> 